use chicken breast pieces about this size. I usually get the boneless, skinless, just makes it a little bit easier. We're gonna start baiting these up and getting them right out the back of the boat. That's an eight inch Nocturnal Nation uh, circle hook. Got a little bead, peg float. I usually go about 18 inches or so, maybe 20 inches. I just kind of measure the length of my arm or so on the leader line. And then we got a 2.5 drift weight. So I can bait that up just like that, leave plenty of room for that hookup. You don't want to cover up the end of your hook. These are the new B&M uh, Bomber Series rods. They also have one called the Gunner, and then there's another one. They're, they're representing different parts of the armed forces. You know, pretty pretty cool thing for them to do. But uh, it, it, it's a good looking rod. Hopefully I catch a big fish on it today. Last trip I called, you know, pretty good fish. I'm not sure, I never weigh, so. He was decent. I could say he was in the mid-40 range or so, probably. Um, but I caught him on one of my older rods, and I really wanted to catch him on this one. But actually, both... Uh, that was a horrible cast. I just need to get past the drift socks, though. Uh, actually, both of the fish I caught on the last trip were on the older rod. They're actually the same rod, so I'm going to move the rods around a little bit maybe throughout the day and kind of gamble because I still only have two of these because B&M hasn't sent me my other four rods yet for the six to come out the back of the boat um they said they're working on it they're working waiting on the shipment that the rods have been selling really well for them so i'm glad the rods are selling good for them um i really don't know a lot of other youtube channels that fish exclusively b and m i mean it, it could be um catfish channel anyways it could be they're the number one rod with crappy rods uh you know they've been around for um i think since the like 60s or something and if you was curious, B&M stands for broom and mop. <laughs> Fish, what a broom. No, it's because originally they were selling brooms and mops. And they threw some cane poles in the lineup. And the cane poles started outselling everything else. So they went exclusively with poles and then innovation into the rods you see today. So, you know, pretty cool history. Check that out if, you, if you're a history buff like me. So we're going to get the left of these lines out. And hopefully we can get a catfish. down that rod went down and it come up but it's got some tension to it I don't think it's nothing on there I think it's the planer board playing tricks on me I think I don't know Feels like it could be a little bit of weight on there. It was a slow. This is on the bomber. Lines have been in the water um ten minutes. I just sit down, drink a little bit of coffee in the heat. <laughs> this real seat's a little loose. I don't think I got it quite. Tighten. It's a horrible time to try to tighten it, but it's annoying me. Roger rocking back and forth. Yeah, that's better. I still hadn't felt no fish do anything. I said these rods are softer. I can't really tell. If this is the if this is a fish or this is the planer board, because these rods here, if these rods bend, there's something on them because they're they're medium heavies, but they're still kind of stiff rods. I think there's something on there. Let's get this planer board off. But I haven't haven't felt the fish do anything. Yeah, some weight on there, definitely. I mean, it was like a slow pull. And then the plane aboard, I've noticed it started going back out that way a little ways. Now hopefully he kind of swim under that other line right there, but if if he didn't, you know, no big deal. I'm the king of hanging up. As long as I can get the fish in the boat. But the rod is smooth. Um I think it's it's carbon fiber 
an uh, e-glass hybrid and it's supposed to be to where the tip is sensitive and about midway you can see how it kind of bends and then about midway it stiffens up because I've had some really soft rods that just bow over and it just felt like I had no control over the fish yeah look at there oh he knows he's hooked now yeah <laughs> he knows he's hooked now he said wait a minute what's going on here he's pulling no drag but he's got some tension on this rod this rod sure looks pretty yeah it looks like a pretty good catfish look at there pull a little bit of drag drag's actually a little tight just loosen that up a little bit he come to the boat, right to the boat. So he come right to the boat. So my guess is he's probably got some energy left in him because he come to the boat quick. I don't even think he knew he was hooked. He kind of just, uh, look at it. <laughs> That's when it's fun right there. Yeah, I like that. Look at that rod. Look at that new bomber go. Must be hooked pretty good. And that's actually on a, that's a Brute Demon Dragon. Uh, the hook set looks pretty decent. I got a, a couple of rigs here with Demon Dragons and some of them are, um, Some of them are peg floats. It's just what I had on hand. I was too lazy to make it up any more new, new rigs. You ain't going down easy, I can tell you that. Let's see if we can get him up this way. He's barely, barely called in the lip. I mean, he's barely hung. There we go. Barely caught in the lip. So strategy for today was, I drift fished about two days ago. I started in one spot, I thought there'd be fish. I fished here for about an hour and I caught two. One was a pretty good one. So this is a, a you know, of course this is where we started. So it looks like it kind of paid off so far. Now he's not as big as that big one I called the other day, but this is a good start. We're just, uh, this isn't a real big run and we're probably gonna drag it multiple times. It takes about an hour, hour and a half to drag across this thing. You ain't gonna catch it all in one time. You ain't gonna catch every fish in one time. Drag across it multiple times. It's basically just a head, you know, but where two channels run together, this is kind of like the head. I got on a glove, I've been doing this a while. Catfish this time of year, they, if, especially if it's a male, boy, he's flinching up too they will rip your hands off they are aggressive they're hyped up they could have spawned already or they're looking for a catfish to spawn with but either way they're still hyped up you can see i thought i seen some scarring on him somewhere oh if i could turn him this side of his tail you can see right at the bottom he's got a little bit of scarring on him right there but yeah not a bad catfish big flat head on him it's not a flat head but some of these blues have big like flat heads on them so i could i just felt some air come out of them he come from kind of deep that's why i tried to nurse him a little bit not that deep this leak ain't that deep i'm sitting at 30 foot so boy there's some big marks on the fish finder i might be his big brother let's get this guy back in and see if we can get another one we can run this several times and try to catch some more okay buddy be gentle no <laughs> ah anyway there he goes Looks like we got another takedown on this bomber. They're liking the bomber today. Same rod. So we're gonna do multiple runs. So what does that tell us on the next run? We need to shift it over that way a little bit because that's where both bikes have come from. The ch uh, main channel is back to our other side behind us, but it looks like they're off the channel a little bit further. And I'm really not right on it. I'm probably 
50 foot off of it. Now let's see if this fish does like the last one, because the last one, he didn't put up a big, oh no, he's fighting now. I was about to say, the other one didn't put up a big fight till he got right to the boat. I think this new bomber rod is just so smooth. They don't even know what he hooked. Hey, yeah, yeah, he knows it's hooked. <laughs> but yeah, I'm liking the action on this rod. Uh, I've only used mediums once before. And the ones I used, and I'm not going to say, because I don't, I'm not putting down nobody's nothing. You know, I don't put down people's products. But it was real soft all the way down almost to the last eye. I noticed this one, you get a good flex about midway, and then it really stiffens up. It feels like I got a lot of control of the fish still, so. Let's see here, let's get this planer board off. Ain't that crazy though how you'll keep catching fish with the same rod all day? That's the last trip, I caught two fish on the same rod. So, this might be the hot rod today. Hope my camera position is okay right there. I had to, you know, the sun's blasting on it. Had to kind of move it by, up under my bimini top so it don't shut off. These GoPros will shut off. This fish hadn't pulled no drag like the last one, but the drag feels like it's right where it needs to be. He's got some weight on him. I got the butt of the rod kind of tucked into my hip. Looks like it might be another one about the same size as the last. That's pretty good. I think he's a little smaller. He's running now, though. Look at there. This is on the Demon Dragon Brute again. So maybe that's the key for today. Two on the brute. And this takedown was just like the last, just a real slow, subtle pull, and then they just kind of pull, started pulling off to the side. This one looks like it's hooked a little bit better. There we go. But these fish are after some rattle action today, which I do have uh, line rattles on the other rods also. Another uh, rigs. Not a bad little fish. Yeah, maybe, maybe close to a team. You know, maybe 10, maybe 12, 13. You know, something like that. It was still fun though. Still good action on that B&M. We're going to go and get this guy back in. I'm just going to go and drop him right off the side right here. Okay, let's keep rolling. I think we got to take down on this one. Yeah. No planer board on this one. It's one straight at the back. And oddly enough, it's on the bomber rod again. <laughs> What's the coincidence? The bombers are on fire today. <laughs> now this one's in the middle, and what I really want to do is get him all the way on one of these sides. Because I got the drift socks at the back. I got the uh I got the um jeez set this drag it's a little tight got the power poles down so once we get him in enough i'm going to kind of steer him underneath this line and maybe over the next one <laughs> so we're going to reel this one in a little bit just to get this uh plane of board kind of out of the way hopefully he's uh he's hooked up good he almost ripped the rod out of my hand i don't know if you've seen that <laughs> We're just gonna hold the tension on him. Drill this one in real quick. That one's out the way. So we see if we can steer him over here. And that's where I like a little bit stiffer rod if I need to steer the fish on a certain side of the boat. But he's still coming straight down the center. So what we're gonna do is go ahead and weave this under here like that pull it right underneath that other line and we can try to pull him right through instead of getting him in the back pick up a couple things here when you're out here and you hang up a lot 
But he feels like a smaller fish unless he do, he's doing like that uh that first one. He didn't fight much until he got right to the boat. Yeah, yeah, I think he's a smaller one. But he still counts. Now we're going the wrong way. These fish are getting smaller. They're supposed to get bigger. In it. Okay, there's a little guy right here. Look at it. He got a little bit of weight on him. He got a little belly on him. He's eating, he's doing like his mama said, packing on the pounds to start, start be a you know a strong boy, but we can get hear him. He's like, Mr. Put me back, please. I'm gonna put him back too. You the right guy called you today, because I knew a lot of people would keep this little fish right here. So we're gonna put this little guy back in the water. And if you're one of those guys that would keep a little fish like that, shame on you. I'm just playing. Do whatever you want. I don't care. As long as you follow DNR regulations, hey, it's your boat, your rules. That's what I say. Let's keep going, see if we can get the big brother. Ah. Uh, this one bent down. It's been kind of like these slow takedowns. Now it's, it's pulling again. And I thought it might have been a little snag, but it's still pulling. The planter board's pulling away slightly. So we're going to check this one. Because that's how every fish has been so far today. And it feels like we got a fish on here. These are the B&M um, Magnums. I've had these about two years. This is a stiffer rod. Now, if a big fish is on this, if you see this rod bend over, it's, it's probably a good fish. Which it hadn't really, it ain't flexed much yet. Let's see if we can... Just let it pull right around this other line right here. There we go. Use the planer board to kind of steer it. Like I said, if I get in that other line, I don't care. Line's cheap. I got more rigs. It's not like it's a big deal. But it is a pain when you, when you have a fish to go all the way across. You go all the way across and mess up everything. So let's see. Let's get this planer board. Gonna take it off completely. I think he'll be okay. He hadn't pulled much yet, but every fish today, some of them haven't fought much until they get right to the boat. Yeah, he feels like dead weight. He's not. Oh, wait a minute. Look at it. He's waking up now. Waking up now. <laughs> He's like, hey, what, what's going on? You're not pulling no drag. Watch that drag is a little tight. Ain't it crazy how a rod can just sit in your garage or whatever and then it's tight just from bumping it around? And I got a bad habit of not checking every one of them after I cast them. Let's see, I see white. He looks like he might be a pretty decent one. Bigger than the last two, but he's not a big, big one. It's the old mitt. I can get home in everything. This net will get in your way all day, but when you need it, you need it. Get him on over here. Yeah, that's a pretty good fish. The line's wrapped around him. He got it off. There we go. Yeah, when uh, me and my brother was fishing about two years ago and he caught a 78. I knew it was uh, it's time for a bigger a bigger net, and I think the biggest I've put in this net is a 62, and it was pretty effortlessly. So, 
We're going to go ahead and call it for this episode of Jim's Catfishing the Gear. Lake got slick, catfish quit biting. Happens quite a bit. You know, bluebird skies sometimes ain't the, the best thing. A little bit of current going seems like it helps a little bit. But we're going to go ahead and call it for this one. Hope everybody enjoyed it. To the next episode of Jim's Catfishing the Gear, we out.